Hey, it's Shree here, and if your husband has recently separated with you or wants a divorce and you're desperate to try and get him back, then you'll want to make sure you're aware of these pitfalls that I see all the time that are going to sabotage your ability to be able to get him back. And look, I understand that if you're going through a really tough time, like how emotional it is and how you know your emotions are probably fluctuating up and down every single day and you know you might be clinging on to little moments of hope and it's all very normal but i really want you to know that you know transformation is real you know i see it regularly with my clients behind the scenes who are making really beautiful shifts not only within themselves but within their marriage and being able to get their husbands to to really make an effort to you know want to connect with them want to grow with them and so on so Make sure you cling on to that hope. Make sure you know that transformation is real and make sure you apply the steps that I'm going to talk you through shortly. And make sure you hit that subscribe button below so every week you get access to my videos about male psychology and learning more about how you can save your marriage and really healing on the inside as well. As I said, you know, going through a, a place where your husband is wanting to separate with you is so devastating on so many levels. You know, at the end of the day, one of the reasons why it's so painful is because as human beings, we crave security and we crave comfort. And our family environment provides us with that stability. They provide us with that comfort and that security on the inside. And, and because of that, if something's been taken away from us, which feels like it's the lifeblood of our existence, you know, we, we get so afraid, we get so afraid of, of what might happen and whether we're going to be okay and whether we're going to survive and so on. And what ends up happening is when we're in that survival state, our brain literally goes into a primal place and it starts to look for danger. It looks for threats. And also what happens is we start to act in a way that's almost similar to that of anyone who has got any form of addiction. Now, just to be clear, you know, addiction is not just in the form of, you know, drugs and alcohol, which is what we're exposed to. You know, addiction can be, you know, addiction to success. Addiction can come in the form of, you know, food and, and eating certain types of foods because it makes you feel a certain way. There's just so many different types of addictions. And we find ourselves getting addicted. So in other words, what happens is, let's say your husband has left you and you're trying to you know, figure out exactly what's going on with him and where his mindset is at and so on. You might find yourself you know, on your phone and checking out your you know, Facebook messenger and seeing when, when was he last online. You might go onto Facebook or Instagram and see what he's been posting. And even though you know it's wrong, even though you know you shouldn't be doing it, you torture yourself because you're just looking for that tiny hit that that might just say to yourself, oh, look, there's a little bit of hope there. You know, and what I mean is, let's say you go on Facebook and he hasn't posted anything. You might go, OK, cool. All right. I can breathe again because he hasn't been posting photos of him and another woman or posting photos about something else or some memes or whatever it is. You know, it, it, it just gives you a little bit of relief, a little bit of comfort right because that is what we crave so much is comfort and so if we're not getting the comfort in our home environment we're hoping that we can get the comfort in the form of ensuring that the the, the biggest fear that we have isn't actually materializing i.e he's not with someone else but the problem is is twofold one is that we basically torture ourselves through the process because in my experience and I'm sure you probably found this in your own life. When there's something that you don't want and you're putting that energy out there all the time and you're living in that fear all the time, what happens? The very thing that you don't want ends up eventuating on some level. You know, you're hoping that he isn't messaging someone else and then you find out that he has been. You're hoping that he hasn't taken the kids to some place that you wanted to take them to. He does exactly that. There are so many things that happen when we're putting out that energy of, I don't want this to happen, I don't want X to happen, I don't want Y to happen. And so when we're holding on to that vibration and that energy, we end up doing silly things. We message things that we shouldn't have said. We maybe go and turn up at the doorstep and we know we shouldn't have. There's so many things that happen. And look, just to be clear, there's no judgment because at the end of the day, this is so normal. <laughs> I've done this a million times myself. So 
you know, I just need to be clear here that it's very normal, but this is where we've got to be strong. We've got to be courageous. We've got to really connect in with the deepest part of ourselves. You know, it's not, it's not good enough to just kind of say, well, hey, I'm in a dark space, so I just have to accept that this is just where I'm at. Not really. Like you're in a difficult place, but this is where you've got to find those reserves of strength. You know, in times of crisis, in times of challenges, we end up bringing up our best self. You know, the, the, the best parts of ourselves shine at that moment in time. And I want that for you as well. And I actually find that when you're in a place like you are right now, because the energy that we're putting out there is always fear-based and has a lot of negativity behind it, then it tends to, you know, get the opposite result that we're actually looking for, which is, you know, always frustrating in and of itself. So what I want to do now is I want to talk you through some pitfalls and then some actions that you really want to take in order to manage your way through a difficult situation, ultimately maximize your chances of being able to get him back after a separation. Now the first step that I want you to engage in, it's probably going to drive you nuts. And what it is, is do nothing. Right? I want you to do nothing. See, the universe is made up of polarizing energies, okay? We're talking about the masculine and the feminine energies. All human beings are made up of that, but it not only exists within us as humans, it exists within the world as well. You think of it like yin-yang, for those of you familiar with some of the Eastern philosophies as well. And if we think about the masculine and the feminine energies, masculine is very much like go get them, you know, get things done, plan, strategize, you know, take the bull by the horns, all of that kind of action. And because we live in very much a you know, material world, right? We live in a world where people are constantly focused on the external rather than the internal. We're always thinking that, well, okay, if I wanna get my husband back, I need to send him this message. I need to do this, I need to do that. I need to you know, just let him know we're a beautiful family together. You're going through some difficult times. Maybe you need to go to counseling. Maybe you need to go to therapy, etc. And I actually find that in these situations, when we're trying to do so much, it has the opposite effect. It creates more problems. You know, Deepak Chopra talks about in his book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, the law of least effort. And effectively, it's do less and accomplish more. And I've noticed this in my own life as well is that when we're actually motivated by love, when we're motivated by joy and happiness and so on, we do less, but we actually accomplish more. Things gravitate towards us. There are beautiful things that happen when we do this. But if we're like forcing the issue all the time and thinking, oh, what have I got to message him? I need to message him this. I need to tell him about the kids. I need to do this and do this and do that. Then it ends up causing more problems than it's actually worth. Do nothing. Now, some of you are probably sitting there going, but, but hang on, I need to talk to him about the kids. Look, there are going to be things that you absolutely have to talk about. There's no doubt about that. I'm not suggesting that you just hide yourself in some room and, and never do anything forever and eternity. It's, it's not about that. It's really about making sure that whatever action that you take ultimately comes from love, but any actions that you're taking from fear do nothing because as long as your energy has always got the fear behind it it's going to consistently cause problems for you and i need to stress how important this is it's really really crucial i tell you right now whenever i've ever made decisions from a place of fear it's always fallen flat in its face and so even in times of my life where things have been really difficult or been challenging, there's been that masculine part of me that wants to go out there and go, all right, I need to get this done, I need to get this done, I need to do this, 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 and this. And it was actually when I just stopped and I just really trusted in my own power and really surrendered ultimately the outcome to God and, and put it in his hand. And then when that moment came where I was motivated or inspired with love to do something, then I did it. But it was effortless in terms of its energy. It didn't require a struggle. You know, people who 
love what they do. It's not work anymore. It just flows. But when we are in a place where we're not loving what we do, it's a struggle. It's a constant struggle. And one way to describe this in its purest form is when women are pregnant. You know, if we think about women in pregnancy, you know, the feminine energy is what allows an embryo to turn into a baby over nine months. You're not sitting there planning every step and working through each step and so on. You, you conceive and then it's, you have to surrender. You have to let go of it. And then nine months later, you know, on the assumption everything goes out okay, you give birth. And this is also a beautiful thing. We see this happening in nature. You know, acorns turning into oak trees or, you know, planets revolving around the sun and all of these things that happen magically. You know, that's the feminine energy in action. It is in perfect order. It's not planned and strategized and so on. And I think the same thing really needs to apply when it comes to our marriage as well. We've got to remember that, that this can be taken care of, but only if we get out, get out of our own way. If you can remember in some of these moments to do nothing, don't be tempted into sending that message. Don't be tempted into going over to his place and seeing if there's anyone else. Just avoid it all. Okay, Prevent yourself from doing any of that stuff because it's only going to cause problems. And if your motivation comes from love, your energy comes from love, and that's love for yourself as well. In other words, why would you want to torture yourself? Why would you want to punish yourself? Why not love yourself instead? Why not really connect in with your own self and fill your own bucket up? Whether that's in the form of spending time with your friends or whether it's in the form of just enjoying watching some TV shows or if it's in the form of self-development work on some level, do something that's going to nourish you and nourish your soul because that is what's most important in this situation. Now, the second point I want to make was about being gentle. Now, I was just thinking about the other day, if you, I remember a few years ago, we were having some problems with our house and some of the timber had gotten rotten and so on. And, you know, we had to cut open some of the, the walls and we actually saw what was actually going on. And it was absolutely amazing. Whenever it rained, there'd just be this tiny little stream of water that could actually just get through. And I just found it absolutely incredible that this tiny little stream that would only come in during you know, the, when it was raining a little bit, had the ability to penetrate all of that wood and end up coming down out of our kitchen. And not only that, but actually making some of the timber rotten. And you think, of, you know, the timber is super hard. And this precious natural resource, water, has this ability to be so gentle, yet so powerful. It... You know, you pour a glass of water on your hand and it just, you know, it doesn't hurt you. But it has the ability to not only make timber rotten, it has the ability to create erosion. It has the ability to cause floods. It's incredible. And it just reminded me how important it is for us to be gentle with ourselves, to be gentle with our partners. You know, love always heals. Love always is the greatest resource that we have. Always. And it's really important that if we take an approach that's gentle, that's sincere, that's authentic, that's real, that's kind in nature, eventually it's always going to have a beautiful impact. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've worked with clients and their, you know, their fathers would treat them terribly or whatever when they're younger. I've got friends who have had exactly the same experience. And what I found was with a lot of these individuals, whenever I coach them and help them to be able to you know, heal from it, to move through it, then eventually what happened is the fathers came out at the end and started saying, look, I'm so sorry, I, it was all my fault. I felt like that was the only way that I knew to parent. It was the wrong way of approaching it. And I'm just so sorry. And so they were able to build a beautiful relationship in the long run. It, it happens so many times. But only when they're actually able to let go of the resentment and the bitterness and the anger in the heart. 
They had to let it all go. And remember that people are ultimately doing the very best that they can with the resources that, that they have. So be gentle, be kind, come from love. Once again, don't make decisions from fear, make the decisions from love. Allow that to move forward and, and let that guide you. And as long as that guides you, in the long run, you'll always win. It'll always happen. And look, sometimes that might be that you're dealing with an individual who's just really, really, you know, not quite at that place that you need him to be at the moment. He might just have treated you really poorly for a long, long time. And it might be a case of, okay, I have empathy for him. I know he's hurting. I know he's going into a dark place, but I also need to make sure that I'm gentle with myself and kind with myself. So make sure that you are gentle because that love has the ability to penetrate even the toughest of individuals. I promise you that. And thirdly, let your perceived weaknesses actually guide you. Now, what I'm saying here is, and it's a little bit of an extension from the previous points, is, you know, if we're hurting, if we're struggling in our lives, we're obviously going to be going through some tough times. And there is this kind of idea out there sometimes where you've got to be strong and you've got to be tough and, you know, you can't let anything get in the way. And look, there is a, a different definitions of strength. You know, we can be vulnerable and be strong equally we can try and cover up all of those negative thoughts and that actually can lead to us having a real weakness on the inside as well. But we've got to connect in with our own authenticity. And our own authenticity means that at the moment, you are hurting and I get that. And there's going to be a part of you that's going to say, well, you know, if I'm coming from love, then I'm just being weak. But actually it is your strength. It is your superpower. And no matter what, it will always lead to amazing results in the long run. That I can promise you. You've got to allow that love to shine. That's where the magic is. That's where the supposed weakness actually can help you to move forward. I, I've heard it so many times. I know in past situations in my life where people would say, oh, bro, you're being weak. You're being weak. And I'm like, well, actually, no, I'm just being authentic with me. Whenever it comes to, you know, dealing with a certain person or, you know, not going off at them or not seeking any kind of ret retribution on any kind of level, I was just like, no, I'm not going to go down that path. I'm going to come from my heart. I'm going to come from love. And ultimately what it did was it gave me peace. It gave me peace because I didn't let that energy of, say, someone who ripped me off or whatever, I didn't let them fill my heart. I didn't let them, you know, consume me on a day-to-day -day basis. I let it go and I let my love shine. And I think it's so important to do that. I think it's really important to, to let that guide you. And I think when you do that, as I said, you know, your husband is in a wounded place. If he wants a separation, it's not that he's a terrible human being. I mean, as I said before, there are some individuals who are just not quite the right fit. But, you know, on the assumption you're dealing with a good man, he's not a bad person. He's just wounded. And when you're talking about two individuals coming together, that's really quite challenging to be involved because we're so used to our own space. We're so used to our own environment. And suddenly you get two people who are so intimately and, and, and intensely involved with each other that's that can be really really challenging if you don't know each other at a really deep level and you're not communicating properly you're not sharing things and it may seem like things are all good and then there's a moment and boom i want a separation but it, it comes from a wounded place so if we can take that time to let our perceived weakness be our strength and actually let love and light support us in terms of helping that person to also heal. Just, you know, you don't need to do anything. And once again, it often can just be a case of just putting that energy out there and not letting that masculine part of you go, oh, but I'm not actually doing anything. I'm not saying anything to him, so therefore it can't be, you know, actually working. It absolutely does. That's the magic of it. You know, there are so many instances of where people didn't actually do anything to help someone heal, but every day, 
they would send them a blessing, send them a blessing, send them a blessing every single day. And over time, what happened? It had a huge impact on that person's healing. And you know, things like quantum physics are actually proving this now. They're showing that a thought can actually have a direct impact on another individual. So let your love shine. And you know, sometimes I might just randomly throughout the day, I'll send little blessings to my clients or to my wife or to my daughter or whoever in my life. Just send beautiful blessings. I might close my eyes, imagine a white light coming from my heart and just sending that blessing and sending love and light and kindness to them and pray for their healing. It's as simple as that. And that can really promote transformation in other people as well as ourselves because we're filling ourselves with that love anyway. So I really want you to take some time to apply some of these steps. And you know, if you want to take this further and actually go deeper, and you know, there is that masculine part of you that's wanting some specific steps and strategies and so on to help you to move forward and ultimately maximize your chances of saving your marriage and healing yourself, then I'd love to be of service to you through you know, my program, The Authentic Relationship System, which is it's an amazing program. We go deep. We go deep into your transformation, create real proper shifts, and ultimately lay a platform for you so that you learn how to communicate properly, that you learn how to show up every single day, that you learn how to heal and transform. And ultimately, that's the greatest gift that you can give, not only yourself, not only your husband, but also your family and all the people around you as well, your kids, etc. It's a really, really beautiful thing. So if you want to be a part of this, if you feel like it's the right fit, if you like my New Zealand accent and so on, then all you need to do is in the description section below, just click on that link which says book a call with me. Just click on that link, choose a time that works for you, and then I'll contact you at the scheduled time just so I can learn a little bit more about where you're at now, where you want to get to, how we can bridge that gap. And you know, I just, I can't wait to be of service to you. It's an absolute privilege of mine and can't wait to speak to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've liked it, make sure you hit that like button below. If you want to get more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And do let me know what your biggest takeaway is or if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, post them below. I'll make sure I respond to every single one of you or even if you just want to update me on your situation or how some of these techniques have helped you, that would be awesome. And if you want to learn how to save your marriage from the brink of divorce, click this video above. If you want to learn the five stresses that destroy any marriage, click this video above. Thank you so much. God bless and I'll talk to you in the next video.